Good at six. Let's go. This should move along a little quicker than a lot of the previous problems, so let's get started. I've already gotten this one started. Let P be negative 4, 5, Q, 3, negative 2. Find the component form, we'll do that first, of vector PQ. Now remember, order matters. It means it starts at point P, goes to point Q. That means this is X2, Y2. This is x1, y1, and when you use this formula, you have to be very careful of that order. So x2 is 3, x1 is negative 4, and then y2 is negative 2, and y1 is 5. That's supposed to be minus, not a comma. All right, forget about that. So that's 3 plus 4, which is 7. Negative 2 minus 5, which is negative 7. And what does this all mean? It means we've taken this vector, and we've taken the, the beginning place of the vector and put it at the origin. And 7, negative 7, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it may not look perfect because I've got my units all messed up, but <clears throat> all right, give me a second. All right, not a good way to start. Can't even plot a point. 3, negative 2 should have been here. And so forget about that. And it should have been like that. And now we're like, aha, I thought my drawing was just terrible. But nope, uh, I didn't plot that point correctly. That should be down there. Anyways, the math is correct. 7, negative 7. So let's go from there. What's the magnitude? Magnitude is this length. Now remember... We could just use Pythagorean theorem. Now the formula is square root of a squared plus b squared. That will give you the magnitude of vector v. That's our symbol for magnitude. Sometimes you see it like this. But whatever, all this is is Pythagorean theorem. So if this is 7 and that's negative 7, you could go, you know, 7 squared plus negative 7 squared equals c squared. Uh, you're going to get 49 plus 49 equals c squared. So you get the square root of 98, which breaks down into 49 and 2. Now I know some of you are saying, well, why didn't you just call it out for being a 45, 45, 90? Well, that's because I wanted to show you the Pythagorean theorem or this formula works. So yes, this is a 45, 45, 90 because these two sides are the same. So we could have just multiplied those sides by the square root of 2. Find the magnitude. Done. All right, so number 47, vector u is this, vector v is this. Find the component form of the following vectors. In other words, apply u plus v. Well, just add these similar parts together. Add these parts together. Done. 4 times v, you just multiply each part by 4. Done. 3u, which would be 6 negative 9, if I multiply this, both these pieces by 3, minus, and I'm just going to forget about the minus to last, 4 times v, which is negative 20, 16. So 6 minus negative 20 is 26, because that would be a plus. Negative 9 minus 16 would be negative 25. And there you go. Okay, this next problem is going to take a little longer. You just got to be careful. Using vectors u and v from number 46. Um, actually, this is supposed to be from number 47. So we got u here and v here. So it says in p, here's some brand new uh, vectors in component form. Find the component form and magnitude of... Now here we go. First thing we got to do is... Find the component form of u, v. So, what we have here... Okay, you're going to have to bear with me on number 48. So, it says, find the component form, and it says, use vector u, but notice up here, I just need to rewrite this question, and I'm going to rewrite it. So, we're going to say that u is not a component form vector, we're going to say u is 0.2, negative 3, and that v is negative 5, 4, 
and these are two points. And we're going to get rid of this component form symbol. We're going to make that a parenthesis, making it a point. And we're going to do the same thing with this. Now the question makes sense. It says find the component form of 2 times uv. In other words, from u, which is 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. So 2, negative 3. That's our starting point because it starts with a u going to v, which is negative 5, 4, which is right here, ish. So there's negative 5, 4. Now the first thing we have to do is put this, just this, in component form. And then we'll double it. So because it starts here this time, this is x1, y1. This is now x2, y2. Finding the component form formula right here. And plug and chug. So x2 is negative 5. X1 is negative 2, well, minus 2. Y2 is 4, minus Y1 is negative 3. So we get negative 7 and then 7 again. And so, but now we've got to double that because of that 2. So that would be negative 14, 14. But now we've got to do the same thing with Q and P. A little different twist. So Q is 4, I'm just going to kind of get close to this, 4, negative 8, uh, that's Q, that's our starting point, which is X1, Y1, very important to understand that, and it goes to negative 2, 2, which is right here. So there's negative 2, 2, which makes this X2, Y2. We're going to use the same formula here to put this in component form first. So x2 would be negative 2 minus x1 would be negative 4 or minus a positive 4 I should say. And then y2 is 2 minus y1 is negative 8. So we're putting this in component form. So that's negative 6, 10. So what do we have? We've got this which was this plus this, which is now in component form, and now we can just add these two together. So negative 14 and negative 6 is negative 20. 14 and 10 is 24, and there it is. Okay, 49. Find the magnitude, length of spinner, or vector, and the direction angle of vector, negative 4 i minus 5j. Now remember, i equals 1, 0. It's a unit vector. j equals 0, negative 1. So if we actually multiplied this by a negative 4, all we would get is negative 4, 0. Now minus, I'm going to bring that minus here, and now I'm going to multiply j this by a 5, so I'd get distribute, distribute, I'd get 0, negative 5. So, negative 4 minus 0 is negative 4, 0 minus a negative 5 is 5. Okay, so it's really saying focus on this. So if we actually looked at it, negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this is our component vector, meaning it starts at the origin and it ends at negative 4, 5. So the magnitude, if we think of this, negative 4, 5, we would go negative 4 squared plus 5 squared equals c squared. That's our magnitude. 16 plus 25 is 41. Take the square root and there's our magnitude, strength of our vector. Now it says direction angle. Now direction angle is actually how far you spun your spinner, but we're going to think of this in reverse. We're going to find this first, theta, and subtract it from 180. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go tangent of theta equals opposite, that's this one, over adjacent. Now you could use sine or cosine because we got all three parts, but I'm going to use tangent. i got to grab a calculator here. Okay, so we're going to take second tangent 
of 5 over negative 4. I'll just type it in exactly like that and hit enter. And so you see I get negative 51.3. Now just so you know, the calculator is saying that if I went down negative 51.3 degrees, I would have my opposite side negative 5, my adjacent side 4, so I'd still get this. They just the calculator does not know that we're in the second quadrant. So we have to go, aha, we know it's not negative 51.3. From geometry, if this is 51.3, these are vertical angles. So we just discovered that that's 51.3 degrees. That's still not our answer because they want the green. How far did you spin the spinner? So we're going to go 180 minus 51.3 and we get 128.7 degrees. All right, number 50. Let V be a vector from 6, negative 2, meaning this is x1, y1, and this is negative 4, 4 right here. So that's x2, y2. It says find the direction angle of the vector. Well, the first thing we have to do is turn it into a spinner. What does that mean? It means we got to put it in component form. So that's the whole purpose. Well, one of the purposes of this component form business, we've got to turn it into a spinner. So x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1. We're going to take a little look at this. This is negative 10, and then 4 minus the negative 2 is 6. So I'd have to go negative 10, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then it starts right here. And now what I'm going to do is erase this because we just moved it so that its origin is the origin. That's the whole point of this formula. Now if we use some common sense, this is negative 10. This is 6. We can use a squared plus b squared equals c squared or x. That's our hypotenuse, which is our magnitude. 100 plus 36 equals x squared. Take the square root of both sides and there it is. It's the square root of 136. Now, I, I guess I, I'm guilty of not reading the instructions. It didn't say find the magnitude. I just assumed it did, so forgive me. We didn't need this to find this because all we need to do is find this similar to the previous problem. See, the previous problem was already in component form. This one isn't. So now I'm going to just use tangent again. It's not bad that I figured out that this is the square root of 136, because now I can use sine, cosine, or tangent. I'm going to stick with tangent, though. So tangent of theta is equal to 6 over negative 10, opposite over adjacent. So back to our handy-dandy calculator. Clear it out. Second tangent, 6 divided by negative 10, and I get negative 30.96. Now again, the calculator doesn't have any idea that this is our math problem. They're just finding us a place where tangent does equal 6 over negative 10. So the picture they would be giving us would look something like this, negative 6 over positive 10, we'd still get uh, negative 6 tenths. So your calculator is taking you here, but you need to know these are vertical angles once again. So this is also 30.96 degrees. Now if I take 180 and subtract that, 30.96, I'd get, so my direction angle is 149.04. If you just wanted to call it 149 degrees, that'd be fine. Okay, number 51, find the smallest angle in triangle with sides 5, 11, 14. So, um, I already made a mistake. I assumed it said right triangle, so you've got to be careful with the instructions. So it doesn't say anything about that at all. So let's start from the beginning. All right, probably not going to squeeze this in, but we'll give it a shot. So as you can see, we do not have any of these angles. So we cannot use the law of sines. So the law of sines is out. It just won't work. Which forces us to resort to the law of cosine. Now, 
it says find the smallest angle, which is, I grabbed this particular formula with no angles labeled here, so I'm gonna stick my C there because I know that's what I wanna find. I'm gonna put my A here and my B here, and I'm gonna use this formula. So C squared, let me pause this. So there's with everything plugged in. Now let me continue simplifying that. All right, so I got to here. Now the big temptation is to subtract 308 from 317. You can't because this is, these are not like terms. So we have to subtract 317, subtract 317. Clean that up a minute. Okay, we got to there. And now we're gonna divide by negative 308, divide by negative 308. All right, so we get down to here. So cosine of some angle is equal to 0.948. So we gotta go second, cosine, 0.948, enter. And we get approximately 18.56 degrees. That's angle C, big old C. And there's that.